We're beginning a brand new study. We're going to study uh, during this, the remainder of November and on into December uh, before we get to the Christmas holiday. We're going to be studying on Wednesday nights in our Wednesday school the fruit of the Spirit. There are outlines there and scriptures on the papers on your uh, table, and so I want to encourage you to, to get hold of that. You can use your own Bible. I, I think we have the Bible verses there on the paper in front of you. And if you haven't done so yet, why don't you take a moment to take, take those uh, name tags and scribble your first name on those name tags, paste them to your chest so that the other, everybody else in the, in the table will know what your name is. Because one of the reasons we're doing Wednesday School is not only to uh, in, uh, do some in-depth study in some, of the, in some of the major New Testament themes, discipling you and helping you to grow in your faith and grow in your knowledge of God, but we also want you to know each other. How many of you know our, our church will be stronger when we know each other? Amen. How many of you know we all need Christian friends? Amen. That's right. And so we need to know each other. And uh, the Bible even says, commands, know them that labor among you. And so this way you can introduce yourselves to one another as we study tonight. So you, you go ahead and write your names on that name tag. Put it on your chest. I will pray and we'll get into tonight's study. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. I thank you, Father, that you sent your son, but you left your word. And now as we study, we can study the words of Jesus himself and gain wisdom and guidance in our spiritual journey and grow and become fruitful in you. That's, that's our target. That's our goal tonight. Teach us how to bear and produce the fruit of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, the Apostle Paul uh, listed the fruit of the Spirit over in the book of Galatians, and we'll read that passage at the end of my teaching time uh, this evening. But before we even go and look at, that, look at the fruit, we're going to study and, and uh, read together uh, the fundamental teaching of Jesus Himself on fruit bearing. You need to understand the process of how God can cause His fruit to grow in you, through you, and uh, in your life so that, other, so that you'll enjoy the fruit of the Spirit and, and your relationships and people that come into contact with you will, will enjoy the presence of God and the character of Jesus Himself in your life. The uh, fundamental teaching of fruit bearing is found in the Gospel of John, chapter 15. And we're going to read verses 1 through 8 in the New King James Version. It's there on your study sheets as well. Listen to the words of Jesus as He shares with us about the subject of fruit bearing. Jesus said, I am the true vine and my Father is the vine dresser. King James says husbandman, it means a vine dresser. He's the one that dresses and cultivates and grows the vine. I'm the true vine, my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, He takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, He prunes that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine... Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Jesus says in that last statement that this is discipleship, that this is the, 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 the making of a, of a Christian, of a Christian life. And uh, this, some of the most important things that we need to understand about living the Christian life are found in this teaching of the true vine 
and the branches. So Jesus gives us some definitions and gives us some insights into spiritual truth here. And uh, I'll just read down the list of several things that he said. First of all, he said, God the Father is the vine dresser. He's the vine dresser. He's head of the operation. Jesus is the vine. Think of a grapevine. Okay? God the Father owns the vintage. He owns the vine. He's the vine dresser. Jesus is the vine itself. Then you and I as believers, we are branches of the vine. And if we are attached to Him, then we bear fruit. The, br the branch, Jesus said, cannot bear fruit of itself. And that would be true in a grapevine, isn't that right? Uh, a grapevine little branch cannot produce grapes unless that little branch is hooked into the main body and stem and trunk of the vine. He says that we have to be attached to the vine if we're going to bear fruit. Uh, why is that? <clears throat> well, because the life that comes up through the root system and comes through the trunk or the vine into the branches, uh, that sap <laughs> is what causes the fruit of the grapes to be born on that grapevine. So the whole system has to work together. You have to have, that, you have, to have the ground and it's been cultivated and planted by the vine dresser. You have to have the root system and the, and the main trunk of the vine coming up. Then you've got to have the branches, and then the, and then the grapes are going to be produced on those branches. So we're talking about life coming through the vine into the branches and then producing fruit. But spiritually speaking, or in our Christian experience, he's talking about the fact that God's life, God's spirit, God's grace is flowing from Jesus into us and through us into the fruit that God wants to produce in our lives. All right? When we're talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit or the fruitfulness that Jesus can give us, and we're talking about essentially this, what is God going to produce in you? If you go to the grocery store and you go to the produce section, that's where you're going to find the fruits and the vegetables, right? So that's what he's talking about. We are to be the produce section of the kingdom of God. We are to have productivity in our life, the fruit of the Spirit, and the fruitfulness of Jesus is to be being produced in our lives. Now, Jesus promised us that our lives can be spiritually fruitful or productive if He puts a condition on it. There's an if. If we abide in Him. Now, let's break that down for a moment. The word abide means to stay or to continue. Everybody say abide. Stay. Continue. How many of you know people that started out with Jesus, but they did not stay and they did not continue? Amen? Are they going to be able to bear the fruit that God wants them to produce? No. It's essential that we stay, remain, and continue in Jesus. That word in, I-N, actually in the Greek is spelled E-N, and it literally means in union with. In union with. If you're saved, you come into union with Jesus. But now he's encouraging us to stay in union with Him, to remain in union with Him, to continue in union with Him. Now this is a faith decision that a Christian has to make all for himself, not only to believe in Jesus and to be born again and to be saved, but now that I'm saved... I'm going to stay in union with Jesus. I'm going to walk with Him. I'm going to worship Him. I'm going to pray to Him. I'm going to trust in Him. I'm going to follow Him. How many of you know Christianity is all about Him? It's all about you and Him. It's not about, as, as important as church membership is, it's not about belonging to the church. It's about sticking with Jesus, following Jesus abiding in, continuing in, staying in union with Jesus. We, we, so in other words, what Jesus is teaching us is we must decide by a faith decision that we're going to be productive, that we're going to see God's fruit produced in us, and that we are going to stay connected to Jesus by following Him to see that happen. 
You understand what I mean by following Jesus? The, the word follow, Jesus said to the 12, he said, come and follow me. Remember that? Come and follow me. He says to us tonight, come and follow me. Come and follow me. The word follow means to walk in the same way with. That's what the word means, to walk in the same way with. If, if Jesus took off uh, from, from one place to go to another place, if he, if, he, if he left Jerusalem to go to Bethany, and he says to his disciples, follow me, that means walk in the same way with me. I'm going from Jerusalem to Bethany, and I want you to walk with me. And together they would walk to Bethany. So that's exactly what he means for you and I tonight and through our life. Jesus wants you and I to accompany him wherever he goes. You know, a lot of times we think, oh, thank God Jesus is with me. He never leaves me, never sleeps. Wherever I go, he's with me. Well, that's true. As long as wherever he goes, you're with him. <laughs> you know, some, some Christians try to go some places. Jesus don't want to go in there. <laughs> in fact, I'm convinced he'll probably, he'll be close, but he won't be right in it. He'll say, I'll wait outside till you get back. And how many of you know every time you come back out of that place, he is right there waiting on you? Yeah, you sense that, right? Amen. All right. Now, let me give you three points here. we got three points tonight, big points. Number one, we are cleansed from our sin and attached to the vine when we're born again. All right? You're cleansed from your sin, all your past sins. And you are attached to the vine, to Jesus. You're now connected with him. You're a branch connected to the vine. The moment that you're born again, you're clean. In verse 3, he told his disciples, he said, Now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. They were clean because they had believed his word. We've believed his word. We believe if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. We've accepted him as our Lord and Savior. Why? Because we heard his word, the gospel, and we believed it. We acted upon it. And we said, I want to be a Christian. I want, I want Jesus to be my Lord. And from that moment, born again, you are clean. Everybody say, I'm clean. All right, point number two. Then, see, some people just stop right there. Oh, yeah, I prayed that prayer over at his church. And, and now I just, I, I just, you know, vacation and party and play softball and go to yard sales and watch football on Sunday afternoon. Do you go to church? I don't go to church. No, I went over and prayed the prayer. But Jesus said, no, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Continue, stay, remain in union with me. How many of you know, just because you leave church and go home doesn't mean you're leaving Jesus. He doesn't live here. He lives in you. Right? So we were sticking with him. We're remaining with him. All right, so he says, and here's number two, then we're to abide in Jesus or stay in union with him. And allow His life to flow through us by His Spirit. That's how you're going to get His grace to consistently flow through your life. Folks, you'll never produce any grapes unless you've got some sap in you. And can I tell you, grapes are the nature of the vine. They're not the nature of the branch. Because we're going to get, I'm going to read you the list of the fruit of the Spirit here in a little bit. And some of you are going to think, man, I'm... I'm pretty poor on most of those. You know, I don't, I don't produce a lot of that. Well, no. In, in fact, that's what Christianity is. It's, it's a grace. It's a supernatural miracle that goes beyond your willpower, goes beyond your natural ability to be somebody. No, no, no. We're not trying to be us. We're trying to be as much like Him as we can. We want His fruit to be born in us. We want His character to be translated into us. We want to be, simply put, like Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit's assignment in your life, to help you to be like Jesus. Jesus here is saying, but this whole process, it won't work unless you stay in union with me. Say this with me. I'm going to stay in union with Jesus. All right, and then number three, uh, we don't like this one, but Jesus mentions it twice in this passage. God the Father will purge or prune us making us more and more fruitful as we spiritually grow and develop. Some people are scared of that, but this is all good. How does He prune us? He prunes us by His Word and by His Spirit, cutting away that which is not good for us. Uh, some people think that the way God 
prunes people is by giving them car wrecks and diseases and sending a tornado or, you know, they lost their house. I guess God's just trying to teach me something. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that God is the father of spirits. He's a spiritual father. Will he spank us? Yes, but he spanks us spiritually. His, listen, His Holy Spirit in you is, is big enough to talk loud enough for you to hear Him enough when you've done something wrong and He can bring conviction to your heart and spank your little bottom spiritually speaking. He does not have to kill your kid in a car wreck to get your attention. Okay? We, God wants us to walk in His protection. He wants us to walk in His inheritance. He wants us to walk in health. He wants us to walk in safety. He wants us to have abundant life. Okay, so you need to get this out of your head that every time God wants your attention, He makes something bad happen. No, 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 no. Come on, come on back to the truth. John 10, 10. Good things come from God. Bad things come from the devil. Amen. Now, I will agree though, if you don't abide in Jesus and decide you can just go live life like you want to, now you're going to lose that umbrella of protection. And yeah, that, that can cause bad things to happen. That's not the only reason bad things happen. Sometimes bad things happen just simply because the devil's attacking you. Amen. Or we've not learned how to claim the promises and keep protection over our lives. Okay? But the point I want, I don't want you to be afraid of pruning. Pruning, you know, it sounds painful. God's going to clip off part of my vine here. He is just going to trim the unproductive parts of your life. And He's going to do it by His Word and by Spirit. This is why it's important to hear from the Holy Spirit, to stay in church, hear the Word of God taught, because through that God can transform your character. The fruitfulness of Christ's character is called the fruit of the Spirit by the Apostle Paul. And now look in Galatians 5, if you would. Galatians 5, 22. And uh, 23, listen to this list. And of course, we'll get into more detail next week on this. He says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, or it could be rendered faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. Nine fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, temperance. Doesn't that sound like Jesus? Let's, let, me, let me ask you something, married people. Doesn't that sound like somebody you'd like to be married to? Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you'd like to be married to somebody like that, you need to be the person that somebody's married to and you're like that. Amen? In fact, this is one of the greatest marriage seminars you could ever study is just to allow the Spirit of God to produce these nine fruit in you. I'm telling you, it's hard not to stay in love with somebody that's like Jesus and that's bearing this kind of fruit. Amen? Now, Jesus said a hard thing or two here in this passage. He, he, he did make reference to the fact that those that don't bear fruit, He talks about their branches. They've been in the vine. But if they do not bear fruit, that they're taken away from the vine. I know some people will tell you, you can never be taken away, but the fact is, God won't forsake you, but He also says in the, in the Word of God that if we forsake Him, He also will forsake us. In other words, we're free to leave anytime we want to. You're not locked in. If you decide to leave Jesus' side, and I'm sorry if this is messes with your theology, but it's what Jesus said. Do I need to read it again? Um, he says in verse 2, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, the Father, He takes away. He says down in lower, uh, further down in the, in the passage, if anyone does not abide in me, if he does not stay in union with me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And then he says, you know what, and you know what men do with branches that have been thrown away? They gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. In other words, he's saying there's a very negative end for people that don't abide in Him, and, and become fruit bearers. Now, uh, I was thinking about this today, and I was thinking about, okay, what kind of a disciple do we want to be? Do we want to be a fruit-bearing disciple? Or do we want to be one of these branches that are taken away because we never bear any fruit? Now, these are the two extremes. The, the, uh, let me give you an example of a fruit-bearing disciple. That one, one example would be John. 
The Apostle John, we're reading from his book, John. How many of you know John was Jesus' closest friend, stuck with him through thick and thin? Jesus entrusted his mother to John at the, at the cross. I mean, John, you can't find any faults with John. John just seems like he's just, man, in it to win it the whole time. Amen? And then the very opposite of John, though, would be Judas, the traitor. He did not remain in union with Jesus. He followed for a time, but then he stopped following. He stopped walking with Jesus. And he became the greatest traitor in all of human history. A name, nobody, you ever notice nobody names their kid Judas. That's why John is such a popular name in Christian culture. And Judas is never, maybe Jude, but not Judas. Nobody's going to name their kid Judas. Maybe Judy, but not Judas. It's not going to happen. <laughs> How many of you would rather be a John as a Judas? How many of you know Judas got taken away? But most of us are neither John nor Judas. Most of us are Peter. Peter made his mistakes. Peter was impetuous. Peter would open mouth and insert foot oftentimes. Peter denied Jesus three times. But you know what Jesus, um, you know what Peter did not do? He did not run away. He did not defect. He did not quit and he did not give up. And Jesus didn't give up on him. In fact, he said, I've prayed for you, Peter, that your faith fail not. In other words, Peter, you're going to make it because I am praying for you. Can I tell you something? Jesus is praying for you that your faith fail not. And folks, if you just won't run away and do away with yourself like Judas, you may not be John yet. But you can be Peter. You may make some mistakes, but I'm telling you, you're going to be okay as long as you hang in there and abide in Christ and keep following Him. If you trip and fall down, just get yourself back up and catch up. Come on and keep on going because if you abide in Christ, you're going to bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap tonight. <laughs> Peter <laughs> became John, like John. And you can too. All right, I'm going to turn it over to the leaders. If y'all lead in your discussion, that's our introduction tonight. We're going to get into the fruit of the Spirit next week, and we're going to define each one of them and show you how to see them develop in your life. It's going to be a great study this month. God bless you. Those of you watching by live stream, welcome. We're so glad that you tuned in tonight. And um, I encourage you to read that passage and pray over it and join us on Wednesday nights for the fruit of the Spirit uh, study. We're going to have a great time here, and we'd love for you to come and uh, be with us physically on Wednesday nights right here at His Church Amarillo Campus, 7 o'clock p.m. on Wednesday nights. We're usually out about 8 or 8, 10, and uh, we'd love to have you be with us. God bless you. Have a good night.